Let's see, anybody gonna find me? Let's share it live. Let's see if I can share it to Parla. I've been not tweeting today. Let's just post that one, Parla. Let's... Hello, hi guys, hi everybody. I know I'm late. Uh, I'm gonna share it one more place. Let's see, share to Telegram. Oh, Brian, this is, if there was just one button, this is the, this is, this is the problem. Here I am, you know, when you go live with um, Periscope, which is of course owned by Twitter, it's a heck of a lot easier to do it if, if you're sharing to uh, Twitter. And sharing to all the other platforms is a whole bunch of buttons. Anyway, I am somewhere different. Uh, a place I never even knew existed. So I had to drop my child at the marina. And I'm going to turn the camera around. The marina is over there. And I'm standing on like a ground. I'm standing on a patch of, of it's like a sand dunes. And I didn't realize, but there's a whole load of footpaths up here. And they've done a reasonable job at uh, blocking off car access, which obviously has been possible in the past. But way up here, there's no one here. I've seen like two motorcycle off dirt bike people. That's it. And um, I'm walking around with these, there's, there's little, here, yeah, look, look, have a look at these. Let's see. You see these? These are everywhere. Little snails in, in shells. There's even the last of the sort of spring flowers, but they're sort of mostly gone. Otherwise the vegetation is all desert uh, and sea, sea adjacent desert vegetation uh, with all these snails everywhere eating everything. And it is really quite a fun place to explore, which I might have to bring the kids to. And I only found it because I was going to park and walk along the beach, but to park anywhere near the beach was hard. So I parked way up and um, this was good. Anyway, what's going on in the world? So everybody's joined Parlour suddenly uh, after the little kerfuffle we had with um, Katie Hopkins. Uh, yes, it was I, I'll take credit. It was I that WhatsApped her on Saturday morning last week and said, uh, Katie, is this really you? especially because you're asking for money over there. And uh, she came back to me on WhatsApp quite quickly and said, what's Parler? <laughs> and um, she had never started an account, so that was not her in the morning. But by the end of the day, uh, with some help from Laura Luma, Laura Luma's a star, uh, by the end of the day, the account uh, was under her control and now she's on, on, um, on Parler and they've like, They've pulled in something like, I don't know whether I've seen a quarter of a million new users. And it's obvious there also. Tommy had an account from way back. Oh, by the way, check out the t-shirt. Thank you, Tommy. Thank Tommy sent me one of these. Uh, <laughs> um, Tommy's been on there for ages, but nobody was really using it. And I, you know, I set up my account in 2018 when they launched. So much so that my, my, I have both usernames there. I've got Brian of London, but I don't use that because I use B-O-L. So I'm just parlor.com slash B-O-L. You know, how do you, how, you know, you know I was in early if I got a three letter name. Um, but it's, it's, it's taking off. Now here, yeah, VK. Everybody, VK, he's still, Tommy's still going to be using VK because Parler lacks a go live function like I'm doing with Periscope. Um, and there's just, the, 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 all of this infrastructure is insanely hard to build at scale. Uh, so it will come. Uh, but for now, and this is something I, I actually want. I don't want the world to see another era where we have dominant social media platforms like i don't i don't want facebook to be replaced by facebook too i do not you know i i want massive fragmentation look it's it's quite obvious we can't live with liberals okay you know that well they can't live with us i don't give a shit what i see in my feed um you know i i'm not gonna get upset or is someone tweeting flags of palestine yeah that kind of thing does not trigger me 
Um, it doesn't upset me. I can live with it. I, I can just either block it, ignore it, do whatever I want. But the, 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 this, this kind of left-wing urge to just shut everybody down, the whole cancel culture thing. I'm going to just dive under a bush here. There we go. The whole, uh, how's that look? The whole cancel culture thing, um, these people, you can't live with them. So there's no, there's no platform that we'll be able to build that will allow proper, intelligent, reasoned debate and discussion. As soon as you allow in the left and they tell you that you cannot say that uh, a, a woman with a penis is not quite the same as a woman, uh, not, you know, I'm prepared to admit I'm prepared to, to be very cordial and nice with transgender people. In fact, I even do know some. Uh, and I would never be rude or nasty or, or do anything derogatory. But it's not the same. It's not the same. You can't let trans women compete in women's sport. That kind of stuff. Anyway, I don't want to get diverted on that. It's not something I even think is a big enough issue to, to get hung up on. But... The point is, we'll never be able to have a platform that includes normal, sane, reasonable individuals and anyone who wants to cancel someone for saying that trans lives, that, that, that trans is exactly the same as, as normal. Can't do it. Can't be done. Um, so I think that there will be a balkanization of the internet. Something back to the original decentralized structure of the internet. I'm putting my money on the whole crypto thing uh, and thinking that that is one way forward. Someone I think asked if I'd seen the uh, Facebook stuff from, from uh, Veritas. Of course I have. And it is absolutely mind-blowing, but yet totally unsurprising because all it is, is it reflects exactly what you'd expect to be there by judging by the actions that they take. You know, banning Tommy, banning me, banning 1.1, you know, destroying a page of 1.1 million followers. That's obviously a valid voice. And you see this in England. Tommy has not, Tommy's appeal has not gone down by him being blocked on Facebook. If anything, he has got more notorious and more famous. And, you know, that last week at Burnley at the football, Someone hired an aeroplane. I mean, think about this. Think, think about all the steps necessary. Somebody hired an aeroplane to fly above the stadium, obeying all the air traffic rules because they haven't managed to find a, 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 anything to throw the book at this guy. Um, they managed to fly above the... Uh, towing this banner that said, White Lives Matter. Now, as a statement, there's just... There can be nothing wrong with that statement. That, that statement is uncontroversial. However... We are gripped in this Marxist power structure, intersectional hysteria, which indicates that Black Lives Matter as a slogan, which is it's just the most perfect slogan ever to build a Marxist revolutionary movement around. Black Lives Matter doesn't mean Black Lives Matter. We know this. It means Black Lives Matter more. It means that the way to redress any historical uh, inequality is to now tip the balance the other way and make white people unequally down. That's their answer to everything. I mean, it's the Marxist answer. It's all about zero-sum games. It's about, it's about if they were up and we were down, now we need to be up, so they must have to be down. It's no, there's no element of reality of, of we can actually all improve together you know, black lives, white lives, Jewish lives, Muslim lives, all lives matter. Yes, obviously. And, and so he flies this banner above, above a football ground. Now, you know, that is much more than clicking like. But, you know, what does the first thing the press do? They find the picture of him standing next to Tommy Robinson from somewhere. I mean, it's a miracle that picture was still on Facebook or wherever it was because most of those uh, images have been purged, which is... The joy of this now is that the left, when they find someone who transgresses and now they want to dig through their, their, their Facebook history to find out that they're a terrible person who liked Tommy Robinson, they can't see any history of liking Tommy Robinson because they removed Tommy Robinson from Facebook so elegantly. So it's like all of their best ammunition has now been taken away from them. And, and the other part of this that I'm actually enjoying at the moment is watching 
the left eat itself. It's, it's you know, Rebecca Long Bailey tweeting out uh, an adjacent... I mean, she was, at best... I know she's got other history, but at best, what she did yesterday was, was anti-Semitism adjacent. In a long article, there was one line that was definitely an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that Jews are uh, responsible for... Uh, black police for policemen in America mistreating blacks. I mean, I think we can all agree that blacks have been mistreated in America since before Israel existed. I don't think that uh, racist, the few racist policemen that there are in America really needed Israel to teach them how to beat up black people. I don't think we were needed for that. So anybody who inserts that into an article is acting from a position of extreme hatred of Israel, and that nearly always spills over into hatred of Jews. So, now, but Rebecca Long Bailey, all she did was tweet the article. But no, according to the rules of the left, and this is rule number four in the Alinsky Rules for Radicals, you must make the enemy live up to their own uh, rules. So, the rules of cancel culture are... You come this close to a Jew hater, you're a Jew hater, you're out. And it's so good to see see um, Ken Starmer or whatever he is uh, uh, act, act that way and just boot her out. And then the wailing and the gnashing of teeth from the rest of the, the, the down and out Corbinites are, it's, it's, it's hilarious to watch and I, and I revel in it. I know that it is destructive, I know that it is all bad, I know that it does no good for, for society as a whole, but... Perhaps the only way we beat this far left Marxist shit is to force it to be destroyed quickly, to destroy itself quickly and hope that on the other side, we've managed to maintain our culture and our understanding of the rule of law and our reverence for uh, the, the great aspects of religion and the civilization that we've got, whether we can hold on to that through this assault and come out the other side of it ahead. That's all I hope. Anyway, I am uh, standing kind of in a bush to get some shade because it is blazing. It's not as hot as London, though. I think, you know, we've, we're up to about 30 here, but I hear that London's hotter. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, I do know this. Within a week, you will not be having 30 degrees, and we still will. So that's all. This is Brian of London. If you don't know me, check me out, brianoflondon.me, though I'm posting much more to uh, Hive, which you can find if you go to peakd.com slash at brianoflondon. You'll find all my stuff. And anyway, it's wonderful talking to you all. And look for this video on 3 Speak Later. Have a great weekend. Shabbat shalom to everybody and see you the next time.